Welcome back to The Last Word. My name is David Jenkins, and I'm joined by Chris Popes. And Chris, we have another big game for Saxon. You know, uh, they're playing Cape Central for a district championship. It's their eighth district championship, uh, you know, contest that they're going to be playing in eight, eight straight and uh, you know they won the last five and I, I tell you what this is going to be a tough game for them this is the third time they played Cape Central and I think you know I think this this, this could be a tough game for Sykeson what do you what do you think about it I don't think so at all uh, I think Sykeson just kind of rolls through this one again uh, they, they showed that the Kennet would be the, we talked about that, that being their toughest matchup of this district tournament but I don't think Cape Central really gives them much of a game. Uh, Sykeson's in a mold now it's district time they know what to do they know what to do to get to the next level and districts is their time just like a lot of these established schools that we've we've seen that uh, we thought would fall by the wayside just haven't they just know what to do at this time and well Sykeson is a team that that just they know their opponents very well they know what exactly what they have to do most importantly to win ball games and and I think they did that last night against Kennett and uh, Cape Central they've already beat them twice this year um, you know, just Cape Central, they squeaked out a win against Notre Dame last night in OT. I know that's a rivalry game. It's always close between them, but that kind of just kind of showed me that uh, Sykeson is a little bit just a, just a notch above them right now, and um, I just don't see a, a, a big, tough matchup against them. I think it's going to be the opposite. I think it's going to be a tough matchup because, for one, Cape Central plays big and big games mm-hmm. lately with it, with this group. You know, they beat Sykeson in the football playoffs. Mm-hmm. And I think they're going to come ready to play. I, I think Saxon will win the game, but I think it's going to be more of a uh, more of a grinded out type game. Yeah. It's not going to be an up and down style of game mm-hmm. like Saxon likes to play. I think Cape Central, if, if Cape Central wants to win, they're yeah. going to slow it down. Uh, they're you know they're very quick, they're athletic, but sometimes they play a little too quick. And mm-hmm. if they slow it down, like they did last night mm-hmm. against Notre Dame, you know they'll slow it down, kind of play a grinded out game. I think they've got a better chance to win, keep that score low. Um, you know. Sykeston really, I mean, outside of J.T. Jones and Vashawn Ruffin, um, with you know Marquise Bratcher scores a little bit mm-hmm. here and there. He got hot last night in the first half, but outside of those two guys, there's really not a whole lot of scoring. Mm-hmm. And you know, I, I kind of wonder what happens if J.T. Jones gets in foul trouble, which he did a little bit uh, in in the semifinal game. And I, I kind of wonder, you know, what happens if they take Vashawn Ruffin out mm-hmm. out of the game. You know, we've seen that they've struggled with ball handling, and if Kate can do all that, you know, which is a, a big big mm-hmm. task. Big if. A big if, but uh, you know, if they do that, that they can make this a ball game. And I, I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think. I think Saxon pulls it out mm-hmm. because they have the experience, and Cape Central is so young. But I think uh, I, I really think it's going to be a close, closer ball game than many people think. Yeah, you mentioned the young part with with Cape Central. That, if memory serves me correct, I think they have only two varsity experienced players from on their team, and you know, they they have played in a lot of big games, but uh, those guys haven't been in a district championship game against a Saxon Bulldog team who's won five straight in the last five years and, and been to eight, like you said. But, uh, you know, they, like I said, they've already beat them twice, 61-52. It's, it's kind of a close, closer game. I believe that was in the semi, uh, SEMO conference tournament. And then the regular season was a little bit more lopsided. But, uh, you know, I just – the thing with, like you said, the problems that Sykes may run into is JT Jones might get into foul trouble or Sean Ruffin might get in, you know, might be off the, the court or, or not have his game, so to speak. But, uh, you know, they didn't really show a lot of scores last night, but uh, that's not really a typical Sykeston win, if you, if you will. You know, uh, Reese Porter has, has really came on. I think he's going to be an X factor. He, he scores a very quiet 10, 15, 20 points every night. You know, he's, he seems to sneak in and get, and get those offensive rebounds and, and able to get those putbacks and, and is able to kind of wreak havoc underneath the goal along with JT. And when you have guys like that, they can, they can definitely – Control the glass, mm-hmm. and I know Cape Central is big, and I know that uh, Jamal Cox, I believe, is is, mm-hmm. is uh, you know he's he's a, a fine player that can can definitely do some things. But but when you have guys, multiple guys like Sykes, and that can they can control the glass, and that's their thing is is rebounding, rebounding, and control that glass. That's something that Hollifield preaches day in and day out, and I I just feel like they have a, they do that against Cape Central and, and pull this one out. Well, they certainly didn't control the glass against Kennett. Um, Kennett's big, long, mm-hmm. athletic, a lot like Cape Central, and Kennett owned the boards at times against Sykeson. Um, and, 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 Cor- and and Porter really kind of uh, sometimes struggles against the mm-hmm. longer athletic, and Jamal Cox is that is that long, athletic mm-hmm. uh, guy. I know that he kind of struggled with them the first time they mm-hmm. played. or you know, And, and, and so I think the, uh, you know, I think Cape Central, they're, they're very well coached with Coach mm-hmm. Church. He's going to have them ready to go. And I think if they come out and they slow the pace down and they and their and their guards slow the game down a little bit, I think they've got a good chance to, to stay in this game. Uh, the the key is early, uh, especially especially early first quarter. If they cannot turn the ball mm-hmm. over, not not lose, not not get ahead of themselves and play Sykeston's game. If they play their own game, 
and, and it's a if it's a you know twelve ten game at, in mm-hmm. the first quarter or something like that. I think we got a ball game. If if it's twenty to twenty to twelve, twenty to fourteen, Sykes mm-hmm. ends up. Um, you, you know, I think Sykes runs away with mm-hmm. it. I think it all starts with that beginning. And, and just keeping under, you know, keeping control of the ball if you're Cape Central. And if they do that, I think they've got a chance. And I really do. I think it's going to be a close game. I think Sykeson pulls it out, but I think it's going to be a close game. Yeah, I wouldn't be shocked if it was a close game, you know, six points down the road. But, you know, free throws down late. You know, Sykeson has, has been notorious for being a, a poor free throw sh- shooting team. Uh, but that's not been the case here in yeah, the last few years with them. That, don't foul yeah, Sean Ruffin. You do not want to foul for Sean Ruffin or, or anyone else for that matter because they're, they're pretty much lights out towards the end of the game in closing games. It, it seems like they just have that mindset now mm-hmm. as to where, you know, hey, we're going to get fouled and put on the free throw line because people think we can't hit our free throws. Right. Well, here we go. We can hit our free throws now and close out games. So. Right. You know, Sean hit 8 of 8 mm-hmm. uh, late in the game against Kennett, and uh, he really stepped yep. up against mm-hmm. Kennett, and when that game got close, he really took over. And that's something that uh, Cape Central also is going to have to watch mm-hmm. for. But Sean Ruffin is just playing phenomenal, especially late in games or when it's a big pivotal point mm-hmm. in the game. He's really playing phenomenal. And so they're going to really have to uh, control him. But, you know, um, you know we'll, we'll see. You know, they've got some quickness. They've got – and sometimes when you're younger like they are, you don't know any better. You mm-hmm. don't know you're supposed yeah. to be nervous in these high <laughs> games. And, and so, you know, they may come out and, and just, you know, play fearless. And if, if so, then, then uh, Sykeson's got a ball game. But mm-hmm. I, like I said, I, I think Sykeson pulls this one out just closer than what some people it think. It will shock me if Cape Central wins this game. I'll be on the floor, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. But uh, we'll see what happens. Like you said, it could be an interesting matchup. Uh, next matchup is uh, Class 1. Scott Central kind of uh, shocked everybody, really, with, when it, with beating Leopold and then beating uh, Risco. Not really a shocker with the Risco win, but them being in the, in the point one win away from going to state again. I, I don't think a lot of people saw this from this team at this point in the season, Jinx. You're, bra- you're brave now that you, yes. you've stuck with them. I've, kinda, I've got called out on it. You know, a couple of people have kind of called me out on it going against the Braves. But. Well, I'll be honest, my arm and shoulder hurts. I've been patting myself <laughs> on the back so much for picking Scott Central. But, you know, I, I really did think Scott Central would, would win, you know, win the district. Mm-hmm. And, and I really think that they're going to make you know, the Final Four. Uh, just because, you know, you, the experience, and, and they do. They play different when it gets into district time. When it, when it really matters, they buckle down, and their style of play is really tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, for the, uh, the opposition, you can't you can't simulate the way what they do mm-hmm. in practice. You you can't simulate their quickness. You can't simulate that press and the way they attack you and the way they keep attacking you. Mm-hmm. You know for for the entire game and it, and it gets you know it wears on on teams. It wore on Leopold. Leopold had their chances. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had plenty of chances early in that game, but they were tight. You know I, I said they would come out tight and they were. They came out tight. They they, they miss shots that they normally make and and Scott Central does that to you with their pressure mm-hmm. and. And, and they wore them down late, and, and they just didn't have the legs late to hit the shots they needed to make. And I think the same thing happens to Eminence. Eminence is a very good team. They're 24-5. Mm-hmm. and five. Uh, Scott Central beat them last year 65-51 in, in the uh, quarterfinals. And, uh, you know, they're, they're you know, Eminence is similar to Risco. They have a little more mm-hmm. size, but uh, they're, they're very similar. They've, they've got some shooters. Uh, you know, they have uh, Cole Keeling, who's a 6'4 senior. Logan Dyer is a 6'2 sophomore. And then I think their big scorer is Jesse Lacey, a 5'7 mm-hmm. uh, senior. He's, he's a shooter. Uh, he had, you know, led them in scoring last year, I think, against uh, Scott Central. He, he's a good player. But they, uh, they they remind me a lot of Risco, and I think that you know, Scott Central wears them down. And at the end, uh, you know, they, they pull out the win. They go back to the Final Four. Mm-hmm. You know, this I mean, team that they, the thing that kind of uh, – jumps out to me with the teams when they get to this point when when Scott Central gets to this point in the postseason is is who they play and who their opposition plays uh, you know, a lot of times we talk about level of competition and people kind of brush that off to the side. Well, you know, you haven't played this thing, this thing. It, it plays a huge part. And, and, and Leopold, it kind of showed, you know, they just didn't have the, they didn't play the teams that Scott Central mm-hmm. played. And, you know, once you get out of this area, and I know we like to, to kind of pat our back, so to speak, as for CMO fans and being, thinking we pride ourselves on great basketball. And we do have great basketball here. But once you get out of this region, it's just a different style of basketball. And, and we have a, a, a great tendency to, to make teams play our speed, to play our game. And I think that's what happens here. Scott Central goes in, they play fast, they, they're going to get up and down the floor. They've, they're not as uh, um, maniacal with the ball as they have been. They've been real uh, tempered and, and kind of controlled themselves and, and limited their turnovers, their, their, their self-imposed turnovers, which is going to be key with, with them. But, you know, Eminence, they've won back-to-back district championships for them. Uh, like you said, they played Scott Central last year, but uh, there's no common opponents between Scott Central and Eminence. And, and once you get, like I said, once you get out of here, I just don't think the level of competition that they play 
just stacks up with, with what Scott Central plays because they play a very, very tough schedule for a Class 1 team. They do, and also I think it, not just the level of competition, but I think the style of mm -hmm. yeah. uh, You know, Eminence, you know, they, they play out, you know, kind of in the West, mm -hmm. and it's a lot uh, more pass, pass, pass mm -hmm. shot, not as much uh, full court pressure. And, and so they're, they have no way to simulate what Scott mm -hmm. Central does. You know, there's really not an opponent, opponent that I'm aware of that they play that is similar to what Scott Central does. It has their quickness, that has their, that, that plays with their kind of pressure. And, you know, it, it, early in the game, it's really going to, uh, I think, uh, you know, it, I think it's really going to take its toll. Mm -hmm. Now, Coach McBride with Eminence is a very, you know, very good coach. Mm -hmm. He's been around for a long time. He's played Scott Central several times before, so he knows what they're getting into, but you just can't simulate that mm -hmm. in practice. And that, and Lorandis Banks is just playing yeah. phenomenal also. He had a, you know, he put the team on his back he against Leopold, and, mm -hmm. and again last night against mm -hmm. Risco. Uh, he, he had a tremendous game and, and is really just playing phenomenal. And, and you know, seniors step up and, mm -hmm. and play in big, big roles, and your team leaders step up and play. And, and you know, Banks has really stepped up and played well for them. And, and I think that uh, I think Scott Central is just going to be too much for Eminence. And I think they go back to the Final Four. Yeah, uh, really, Banks has really, like you said, stepped up. And he's had he had his kind of issues there earlier in the season as well, you know, off court issues or what have you. But like you said, you, you have those guys that just know what to do, puts them on their back, and, and he has definitely, definitely stepped up as one of those guys that you rally around and get, and man, he can pour some points in. I tell you, I mean, he just seems like, he just seems like he just doesn't miss his shot, mm -hmm. you know? But, uh, but like you said, you know, I just, I just think that uh, Scottsdale's just going to be too fast for him, and, and, and once you get Lorandis Banks one-on-one -on, -one on off the dribble, I don't see many people stopping him around here, much less uh, with the pass-pass, shoot-shoot style that they play around. Right. Around other places. Right. I think I agree completely. Mm -hmm. Jinx, we love this part of this, the show where we get to answer questions, and, and please keep sending in the questions. We, we absolutely love to do this. Um, you know, one question we have is for Sykes, and obviously their, their season isn't done yet, but we're actually getting questions for next season mm -hmm. as to how they're going to be. And with them losing a lot of seniors, you know, where do you see Sykes in ranking next year? Well, it's tough when you're still in the current season <laughs> to see how they're going to be next yeah. year, but, uh, you know, Sykeson is not um, in, in a stage where they're not going to be good the next year. They're going to be good next year. Mm -hmm. Now, do I see them as good as they are this year? Probably not. You know, losing to Sean Ruffin and their other seniors that they have, that's going to be uh, some big losses for them, especially in the ball handling. I, mm -hmm. I, I really question where they're going to get some ball handling from. But, you know, the, the days of them going 6 and 17 are well behind mm -hmm. us. They're going to be good. I think. Uh, I think you know with JT Jones coming back, mm -hmm. you you have a definite core of of, of players mm -hmm. right there, just led by him. That's going to be tough to tough to stop. The, the problem with I think Sykes is going to run into next year is nobody else really loses any players of consequence yeah. for the most part. Kennett returns a lot of their best players. Uh, Notre Dame's going to be tough mm -hmm. next year. Cape Central returns almost everybody. They're going to be really tough. So I think you run into you know with other teams are kind of just going to be getting better and. If Saxon falls off just a little bit, does that even them back up mm -hmm. with the pack? But, but I, you know, Saxon's is still going to be good. Don't 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 think next year just because you're losing a bunch of seniors that they're not going to be good, um, because you know. Don't, don't fall into that trap yeah, because yeah. they're still going to be very good. They, they've got that program rolling. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's not more of a, the players that they bring in. It's the, it's the system that they have now. Mm -hmm. Coach Hollifield and, and Coach Assistant James, they've done a tremendous job of, of implementing this game plan of, of, of what they do best, and that's just you know run and gun, the defensive pressure, and they do it better than almost anybody around here. And, and that's the thing with me is I'm just so impressed with the, the actual str the strategy that goes into it and just the, the – They've had this going since you know in the lower grades now, and they've had these kids playing this style, and it, it's all it's all the system. Yeah, I, and don't get me wrong; they have great players, and, and you know it takes talent to to be a good team. But you know a, the system plays a huge part in in Sykeson's success. You're right. Yeah. You're definitely right. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, Sykeson, you know, they, they've got the players that are perfect for the mm -hmm. system. They know how they fit. And like I said, I think the biggest question next next year is going to be ball handling. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think they're going to have the shooters. Uh, I think they're going to have the inside play with JT Jones. Uh, but I think that, you know, I think the ball handling will be uh, the biggest question mark, and, and Coach Hollifield will address that in the summer. And, and, you know, they play a lot in the summer mm -hmm. and through the, through the fall. Uh, so I think I, I, don't, I don't think that will be a problem by the time the season rolls around. Next year, just I think the competition – Le leaps up yeah. to them, so I think that's going to be the biggest thing. Not that they're not going to be good, just that the competition is just going to climb up mm -hmm. as well. Let them get a district title first and, and a state title because I predicted it. But let's yeah. let's let's get that first before right. we start worrying about next right. year. Right. <laughs> Another question we had is Otto Porter, uh, being a Scott Central grad. Mm -hmm. They want to know where Otto Porter ranks 
with the uh, with, with some of the best high school players ever come out of Southeast Missouri. And, and you know, for those of you who don't know, Otto Porter had just had a huge game against uh, Syracuse. Mm-hmm. He plays for Georgetown and and is getting a lot of uh, national praise. Mm-hmm. And and Chris, where do you think he matches up? He's right there at the top. I mean, there's no question about that. You know, when when you talk about best players to come out of this area, obviously, Otto Porter. Junior and his dad obviously was pretty good, mm-hmm. uh, but ben, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tyler Hansborough and Otto Porter definitely sticks out. But in my mind, I think Otto Porter is just one notch above Tyler, uh, only because he can do more things. Uh, he's he's more uh, fluid with the basketball. He can shoot from the outside just a little bit better. Tyler Hansborough is just a master around the basket, and he was such a dominant college player that that you know it's it's hard to to put anybody above him. Mm-hmm. But when you go to a, a national powerhouse like North Carolina has been, and you are the player of the year there, you're, you're the leading uh, scorer in, in North Carolina history, and you know it, it's 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 kind of hard to, to kind of say that somebody would be better than him. But I just because just simply because Otto Porter can do so many other things, and he could probably end up being a little bit better of an NBA player just because of that, because he can play the wing position, he can go inside, and he can battle for rebounds, and he just does does so many things. So such so greatly uh, that that uh, in my, in my mind he, he's tops. Um, I, I I agree for the most part. I think he's I think Tyler Hansborough is just a better college player. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I, I really do. But I think the upside for Otto Porter, like you said, is just tremendous. I think whenever I think that Tyler Hansborough will be known as a great great college mm-hmm. player. Um, Otto Porter will be known as a very good college player, and then when he gets in the NBA, will be a much better player yeah. than Tyler Hansborough. But everything you said is, is true. You know, he's just he has all the intangibles. Mm-hmm. He has everything you want in a player. He's got some quickness. He, he can shoot the ball. Just mm-hmm. it, it's amazing how he shoots. Yeah. He's always I've always been impressed with the way he shoots it. But you know, and he does all the little things too. I think that when it's all said and done, Otto will be the better NBA player, and probably will be known as the maybe the best player to ever come out of Southeast mm-hmm. Missouri. Mm-hmm. Uh, time will just tell on that. We'll just have to wait. And to that's see. that's not to discredit anything Tyler Hansborough has done. Even oh, his, his brother Ben Hansborough, the Big East Player of the Year, a few mm-hmm. you know a few years ago. But we've had uh, the thing that. Uh, I've been thinking about watching Otto Porter and, and, and things like that. We've had a lot of, of talent come out of this area in the recent years, and even in the St. Louis area and just in the Missouri area, period, with you know Ben McElmore at Kansas and Otto Porter at Georgetown and, and Tyler Hansborough, the Hansboroughs, and, and there's plenty more that I mm-hmm. could probably name. But we've, we've been blessed to see a lot of great mm-hmm. players here yeah. recently and, and going up to state. And you know, I remember watching Bradley Beal as a sophomore and up at state, and, and it's just it's it's just fun to, to watch those guys in high school and then see them ha- have success in the college arena and as well as the pros. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, that's our show for this week. And uh, one thing we do want to mention is we didn't say much about or anything at all really about the Charleston Clearwater mm-hmm. sectional game or the Oran sectional game. Um, due to our taping, we tape on Wednesdays. The games have not happened yet, so we didn't feel it was appropriate to talk about them. We haven't forgot about you, just the way the tapings were sort of scheduled. Uh, we just we just couldn't do anything about that. But you know, if you know, our next show is coming up, it'll be next uh, Tuesday, mm-hmm. and we'll if. You know, we'll talk about that if, if they make the Final Four. The, you guys will definitely be talked mm-hmm. about. Um, and while we're on the subject of, um, of games and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to issue you guys a viewers challenge. If there's something you want to see us do, maybe hit a fast pitch softball or or go out and and try to uh, beat a local high school player at a game of horse. Email us. Let us know. It challenges. And if it's doable, then we will uh, we'll accept your challenge and we'll film it. And you can make fun of us in the next show and. And you can get a good laugh out of it. Uh, we have no problem uh, embarrassing ourselves, do we, Chris? No, not, not at all. Not at all. I do that on a regular basis. <laughs> um, so, so issue the challenges. Just, just send us an email or send us a message on our new Facebook page, mm-hmm. and 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 let us know what you uh, what, what you want to see us do. Speaking of that Facebook page, it's uh, if you want to go like the show, we we've put our past shows on. You can go watch past shows, and we we update uh, occasionally with with just any kind of information that we might want to pass along. But it's uh, SD Sports presents the last word. Go ahead and like that, and you'll get to see all of our updates and, and things like that. Also, our Twitter account is at at SD under slash sports and the website uh, standard-democrat.com you can answer send questions comments uh, viewer challenges like we said well, I'd really like to see what uh, Jinx has got on the gridiron but uh, we'll just have to see what you guys come up with anything at all if it's doable obviously not nothing too outlandish but uh, that uh, we're definitely looking forward to that for David Jenkins I am Chris Popes and that is the last word thanks for watching mm-hmm.